Hey guys, and welcome back to this reading of Sayano Yuta. Glad you came back. Um, last time we see uh, Yosuke's descent into madness because Saya tampered with his brain as an experiment. And he basically killed his family and forcefully had sexual intercourse with Saya. And then obviously Fuminori didn't like that so he killed him. Then we got our first choice of the game. And obviously we then which led us to the first ending. It's not really I don't think there's a name for it. it I I'll just call it the asylum ending. And I I really enjoyed that ending. It obviously left a lot of loose ends, which is, which I guess people wouldn't like, but it felt like, like despite all the loose ends leaving it open, it felt like a pretty solid ending. And it was like, solemnly happy, I guess. Because obviously, being stuck in asylum for the rest of your life isn't exactly a happy ending, but it looks like he finally found peace with himself and, you know, didn't have the reaction to finding out Thayo was a, uh, you know, a monster that I thought he would, so I guess I was just being pessimistic. <laughs> Maybe I'm just naturally a little pessimistic. But yeah, we will be continuing. There's apparently two more endings. It's only one more choice, so we will get to all of them. I don't know how long this novel is, but yeah. Just taking it one video at a time. Also, last time I didn't notice, but the, the screen's trying to be censored when you open the video. I didn't notice it last time until I edited it, but there's nudity on the... There's a naked Saya on the choice screen, so... I guess you can't, didn't actually see the choices, but it says... Want it all back and don't need it to her question if we want our normal life back, or at least want our sense of life back. Obviously wanted all back, didn't really end up happy. Well, it didn't end up well for him because the police just arrested him. So what we'll, we'll do don't need it anymore. For some reason I feel like that's gonna lead into a more tragic story, but we still have, like I said, we still have a lot of questions about Odai and we kind of said Saya was an alien or something in the last ending. But yeah, and the friends. Didn't see anything more about them. So yeah, let's just continue on. Don't need it anymore. On that terrifying day, when I first opened my eyes after the accident, what would my answer have been? When I think back on this day many years from now, will I wish that my answer had been different? Spoiler, he does. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Here, at this moment, there's no doubt in my mind. I asked Saya, looking at the unidentifiable piece of the monster. So does that completely dismisses my paint theory that she was just stealing paint from him? Unlucky, I guess. Really, a train in the first four minutes of recording. <laughs> I bet that's really annoying, but I can't do anything about that. I need the window open because it's overly hot in here. The because the heating's going to sound full blast. So sorry about that. Hopefully, it's not too um distracting. It wasn't a stranger, of course. I'd spoken with him any number of times, had even and had been even friendly with him before the accident. And now I've killed him with my own two hands. I feel little. Suzumi san, the kindly painter who lived next door, is but a distant memory. The pieces of meat around me, on the other hand, belonged to a loathsome creature whose mere existence was nauseating. Only by killing the vermin could I find relief. 
He complained about my yard being filthy or something, didn't he? The swine. It doesn't matter what Saya did. He wasn't worth keeping alive anyway. Good riddance. Ah, uh, that's not... It's not a good response, Fuminari. These are my honest feelings. Even with a man's blood covering my hands, I am completely calm. Now I know what I lost in the accident. Saya says that I can take it back, but I know that I cannot. It is gone forever, like the life of the man called Suzumi. Saya looks away, her expression unreadable. Everything appears warped to my eyes, only Saya looks normal. I thought that she was somehow unique. So he does come to this conclusion when Saya visits him a couple years later in his asylum cell. It's interesting he's doing it right now, so I guess that means he will accept Saya for who she is, even if we just continue on with this. Which is good, I guess. I guess that will make it sort of less tragic if the ending's a sad one. <laughs> Hopefully. However, I was wrong. It's here just as I do everything else. As something completely different than what she really is. Saya is who she is because of who I am. Just like I said a few minutes ago, it's nothing to be surprised about. I stand and walk over to Suzumi's dismembered corpse. I finally realized that, even though the stench of these monsters' flesh turns my stomach, their blood and gut smell pretty good. In fact, I know this fragrance quite well. I wonder if that's a real story. It doesn't sound familiar to me. I retrieve the cleaver and pick up one of the pieces of Suzumi's body and start removing the skin and tendons. Ah, uh, just as I thought. The stuff underneath looks exactly the same as what Sai and I have been. Okay, this is going more, even though it's kind of nice, it's, it's turning a lot more twisted with the <laughs> So I thought he would be disgusted by Saya, but he's, instead, he's kind of adapting and turning himself into a monster. And there's a fucking train, it's only been four minutes, how did that happen? I don't get it, there's more trains that run at night, at, uh... Well, it's only 8, but it's still pretty dark inside. What do they do in the morning? Unlucky, I guess. Yeah, so instead of hating Sai, he's trying to, like, become a monster. So it's appropriate to live with Saya. Which is, of course, insane, but also, I guess, as shows he's truly in love, and not just in love because of her beauty. Which I thought he was for a while, but so good for him in a romance standpoint, and bad for him on a <laughs> on a moral standpoint. Huminori. Komara, ima wa sonna kibun ni nare nai yo ne. Demo, shinjai ba niku wa niku da shi, tsuteru no mo mottai nai to moa nai ka. Mata reizoku ni shimatte oko yo. I answer easily. There is no longer any room for doubt in my mind after all. Ah, 
通報される前にカットこうと思うんだな。ジーゼス。ブラッそんな風で、あなたはいいのサヤアアスガン、This time with a trace of fear in her voice. I guess I still haven't convinced her of my sincerity. さっきの漫画の話だとね、人でないものを愛した男は、最後に自分が人間であることをやめて、恋を成就させるんだ。Yep, that's my thoughts exactly. ハッピーエンドだよ。ダメだ。ふみのり。さえと一緒にいられるのなら、僕はもう何もいらない。何もかもこのままでいい。Oh my god, this ending is gonna be a lot more tragic. <laughs> god damn. Oh, I decided not to censor this. Hopefully, it won't screw with everything. Tossing the knife and meat aside, I pull Saya into my arms once again. Once more. Um, Dude, I'm so conflicted. I'm sorry I keep talking, but this is really shaking me up. About how I should feel. I'm like, aww, but I'm like, no. <laughs> As Saya tries to wipe away the tears that keep flowing from her eyes, I can no longer see any hint of fear in her face. I have sworn my oath, and Saya has accepted it. We have nothing to be afraid of now. Saya will never need to cry again. Filled with contentment, we exchange a smile and set to the task of cleaning the room. A single person produces a lot more meat than I expected. Speaking of which, I seem to remember doing something similar before. After we finish here, we should gather the meat from the Suzumi house. That should be enough to hold us for a while. But can we pack it all into the refrigerator? Of course, we, we can just use the refrigerator next door. Uh. After we finish our labors and get into bed, I show Saya what I found in the old guy house. The photograph, what Saya, the photograph that Saya has selected for me three, is the one with a. Chigi Prefecture address written on the back. At the outset of my ordeal, I had to depend entirely on my sense of distance to decipher what I saw. The houses in front of me, the mountains far behind them, The clouds high above. <laughs> Excuse me. Only distance and scale told me that. Told me what they were. Photographs and other flat images used to be completely incomprehensible to me. Recently, however, I've gotten better at understanding what things are by their shape. I know what the mountains and sky look like, for example, and. How they are different from buildings. Each of the three pictures shows a similar scene a lone house in the middle of a forest. They must be vacation retreats or something. Papa was a person who was a person who was a person who was a person who was a If the address on the back of the photos belonged to each building, then they probably. Are excellent places to stay hidden from prying eyes. 
But why three? The dates are pretty old, and it seems odd that they were all taken within a few days of each other. Maybe he was taking photos of houses. He was thinking of buying in order to determine which would be the best candidate for his hideaway. And Saya only recognizes one of the houses, so Odai decided on the house in the Tochigi Prefecture, S-Town. Checking the location on a roadmap of the Kanto area, I find that it's about three hours out of Tokyo by car. The way I see it, the only way out of this deadlock is to take whatever chance we have, no matter how small. The probability of there being a clue to Professor Odai's whereabouts in his villa is very low, but it's not zero. Also, we don't know if his theory about the three cabins is correct. Actually, don't think it's correct. Actually, it might be. I don't know. Ah, uh, nudity. I think I'll check this place out tomorrow. Saya pouts. I wasn't expecting Saya to object. Let's hope not another person comes to the house. Oh, I should be reading this. Right, it's censored. What? It's not, isn't that far away? It'll only take about half a day to go there. Check it out and come back. I'll have to stay home by myself while you're gone. So that's what it is. Slightly exasperated, I smile and rub Saya's head. Be a little patient, okay? You want to find your father too, don't you? Mm. <laughs> After a brief silence, during which her expression is hard to decipher, Saya timidly looks up at me and says, Hey, Fuminori. Let's forget about Dad. Huh? huh? I'm completely blindsided by this. Forget about him. But he's your father, right? Aren't you worried about him? Not anymore, Saya says, coming closer to feel my warmth. I have you now. I call him dad, but he's not really my father. <laughs> he taught me a lot, and probably loved me in his own way, but you're kinder and warmer. Saya's words make me happy, but I also feel the loneliness in them. Are you really alright with just me? Yeah. You don't like it just being the two of us? Yeah. I do, but I also want to meet Professor Ogai. Having finally figured out how to explain my feelings, I continue. I want to get to know you better, Saya. If there's someone who knows more about you than me, I have to meet them. 
そうなんだ I see Shia doesn't seem angry but she does tilt her head quizzically as though my thoughts are strange to her そうやっぱり明日この場所に行ってみよう I also want to yeah I'm going to check it out tomorrow Another plan has started to form in my mind one separate from the search for Professor Odai If I find the professor there great If I don't well I think I can find another use for this mountain retreat Yeah it's probably getting dangerous to stay there especially if you kill a couple people They're bound to look eventually like he's really lucky Toji didn't just call the police on them Sayo I just hope no one visits her when he's gone, because that always happens. Unluckily. I know you'll be lonely, Saya. But try to bear it for a little while. Okay, she nods. And then looks questioningly into my eyes. Fuminari, you really want family and friends. More people you can spend time with, don't you? Well, that would be more fun, yeah. Fearing that Saya will start sulking, I heard the ad. たとえそういう人たちに囲まれて暮らしてたとしてもさやだけは僕にとって特別な一人なんだからね But don't get the wrong guy But don't get me wrong Even if I have lots of friends and family You'll always be special to me うんありがとう I know Thanks Jiggling さや rubs her cheek against mine さやもふみのりが喜びそうなこと I'll find something to make you happy. Something just for you. Today, all of Koji's classes were in the morning. On his way to meet Yo for lunch after his final lecture, Koji suddenly gets a phone call in the middle of the hallway. Without thinking, he reaches to his belt for his new camera phone, but curses when he realizes that the ringtone is coming from the old phone in his bed. He bought a camera phone to see what all the rage was about, but couldn't bring himself to discard his simple, much easier to use, old phone, so he ended up walking around with both. He hasn't transferred his contacts list yet. Calls still come to his old phone from people who don't know the new number. When he finally fishes the phone from his bed, the name he sees on the, the, on the display sends a chill up his spine. Fuminari. Why now? What does he want? It's hard for Koji to be happy about a call from Fuminari now, long after he gave up on such a thing ever being possible. Hi. Oh, maybe he's trying to hitch a ride from Koji. <laughs> oh. Of course, Fuminori would know that Koji always has a lot of free time on Thursday afternoons. <laughs> Fuminori hangs up without another word. What's gotten into him? What does he want? Koji wonders as he sticks the phone into his jacket pocket. This sudden change is disturbing after a week of Fuminori clearly trying to avoid both Koji and Yo. Maybe he's finally ready to talk, in which case Koji should probably consider this a good thing. However, he can't shake his unease completely. 
He still says spats. Fuminari for telling yo. I mean, not yo. Oh, it's been so long. Umi. Umi, his girlfriend. So obviously he would be suspectful. Also, no music. Spooky. Yeah. In the parking lot, Koji finds Fuminori leaning against the fender of Koji's accord. This is the first time he's seen Fum Fuminori since the night at the mysterious abandoned house. It's been a long time since they've spoken face to face in the light. Perhaps that's why Koji senses something strange in Fuminori's expression. He's not sure what exactly, but something has definitely changed. <laughs> Yeah, I guess now that he's embraced being a monster or trying to become one, he's not gonna act fearful or disgusted to other people because, you know, that would also draw suspicion to him, which, you know, could harm Saya too, so he's, he's changing. Is it a good change? Eh, debatable. That's Fuminori sees, seems more relaxed than before. He used to be tense all the time, like he was terrified of something, but now his expression is calm and he's even wearing what resembles a sheepish grin. Nevertheless, some instinct is telling Toji that Fuminori's changes are not all that for the better. I agree. Toji asks, keeping his expression neutral to conceal his suspicion. Fuminori responds coolly. His smile, unreadable as ever, offers no glimpse of his true motives. お前も僕の後から大前教授の家をいろいろと探し回ってたじゃないか。僕とお前とでバラバラに探すなんて二度でまだよ。どうすなら協力してもっと効率的にやろう。うん。Why? Why does there seem to be malice? That an Viscous lurking behind Fuminori's smile. I hope he doesn't try to harm Koji when they get to the abandoned cabin. I didn't really think about that, but that would be a good place to try to get rid of him since he's kind of suspicious about Fuminori. Fuminori's car was destroyed in the accident, so Koji isn't surprised that he needs he'd need a lift. Koji unlocks his accord and gestures for Fuminori to take the passenger seat, and that's behind the wheel and starts the engine. Three hour drive. Buckle up. Even Koji can't conceal his surprise at this. Fuminori says, handing Koji a photo with the with an address on the back. Rather than being angry at Fuminori, Koji is simply amazed that he's seriously expected to be driven over a hundred kilometers. Koji sighs heavily, tapping the steering wheel as he calms himself down. Now that he's come this far, the only thing he can do is see his friend's craziness through to the end. Koji isn't looking forward to meeting the owner of that strange house. But he's even more uneasy about letting Fuminori go alone. It looks like he just has to grin and bear it. Fuminori 
Isa. Koji drives out of the parking lot, leaving the rest of what he planned to say unspoken. Fuminor's smile seems somehow wrong, like an emotionless mask glued to his face. I think this is a pretty good spot to leave off. I know it's only been 30 minutes, but since the last episode was a whole hour and a bit, I think that's fine since we're getting into some action pretty soon. So yeah, this is a pretty interesting turn that I actually didn't... I don't know why, I just thought Fuminori would just freak out and hate Saya. Apparently, I'm just... I just missed the mark, because he's going into a full transition mode into becoming a monster. You know, some cannibalism happening. Willingly, last time it was, um... Accidental cannibalism, but now it's, uh, just, just cannibalism and... That's not good, but it's kind of good. Man, this series, this uh, novel really brings up a lot of emotions in me. And that's a good thing. I I'm really enjoying this, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Um, I believe next week I'm really busy since on the weekend, so I might not be able to record the episodes needed. I do have a couple filler episodes of uh, something not related to this visual novel that I can put up during the week, but I might be able to fit in a video or two. I've, I'll have to see though, I don't know how, um, we'll see the time, but yeah. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this, you know, it seems like we'll be getting into some more, er, Maybe not action, but at least we'll be getting some more answers soon. And I'll see you next time. Feel free to leave a comment if you have anything you want to say. And yeah, thank you for watching again. Goodbye.